Okay, mate. What's up? A bunch of people have been asking me about a particular website or two. Uh, the purple flare on uh, Fujifilm cameras that was showing up on the X-T2. It also shows up on uh, the X-T1, but just not as easily. Uh, it's a 24 megapixel sensor uh, combined with the fact that it's in DX format on the X-T2 with the interchangeable lenses. What the deal is is that the flange distance from the rear element, and it depends on the lens, do greatly. Uh, the kit lens is not that susceptible, but uh, some of the uh, primes are that have a protruding rear element. There are two different things. There's the grid pattern and then the purple flare. This is the cause of them. You know, everything is a trade-off, okay? The fact that there's no uh, flappy mirror there, the fact that there's no light box on a mirrorless camera, you know, the rear element of that lens is really, really close to the sensor. Um, the strong incident light, people are seeing the purple fringing from like shooting uh, backlit stuff like the sun's coming in over someone's shoulder or some other such crap. The strong incident light is caused by uh, hitting the sensor, reflecting off of the rear element, and then back again upon the sensor with the obvious color shift uh, due to the AR coating, which is the vacuum deposit of crystalline coating on the rear element. Um, combined with the slight green tint of the infrared pass filter. So what's happening is it's coming off. It's, it's actually reflecting back due to the fact that it's strong flare. It's actually bouncing off. Rather than passing through the light, it's bouncing off the, uh, the color shift. You can see, look at any lens. If you hold it at the right angle, you'll see a purplish or greenish tint. What that's happening is uh, instead of inter-element bounces, light bounce due, to, uh, due from uh, strong flare, between uh, the sensor cover and uh, the rear element of the lens, and it's more uh, applicable to certain lenses than others. I haven't tested all of them. I'm not going to go outside and start shooting into the sun and testing every damn lens to test this. Okay, this is the cause of it. The short flange distance from the rear element to the sensor makes this uh, more of an issue. It's not really an issue, you say. You just have to frame your compositions. Like, I'm going to tilt my camera down a little bit. Okay, problem solved, right? Oh, it's an issue with the X-T2. No, it's not. I mean, it is if you want to be a picky, picky ass, but uh, um, the grid pattern in the exact same situations, uh, strong flare is uh, caused by the constructive and destructive interference of strong flare bounce. People actually notice when they see the purple flare, they'll see uh, this, uh, this uh, grid pattern uh, sort of look when you zoom in and you start being a pixel peeping snob. Uh, so that uh, grid pattern is caused from the destructive and constructive interference of the strong uh, flare bounce. This is uh, exactly analogous uh, to the banding as seen in uh, light slit experiments where the light uh, has constructive and destructive interference with itself uh, when uh, bisected, in other words, when it actually interferes with itself. So. The answer to uh, solving both of these is the use of a, a polarizing filter, okay? Polarizer. If you know that you're going to intentionally be shooting, shooting some strong uh, backlit stuff, polarizer. Okay, once you polarize the light, we solve the problem. The purple flare will go away, and the grid pattern associated oftentimes with the purple flare will go away. So this is the great riddle solved that everybody kept asking me questions and asking questions to other people and nobody had the damn answer. I got the damn, the answer. And there, folks, is the answer. Thank you so much for watching. Okay? Okay. Happy holidays and happy new year and all that stuff. Right? Bye. <laughs>